morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order this special meeting of the White Bear Lake Area School Board uh, for Monday, September 23rd, 2019. Um, roll call, please. Beloy? Here. Chapman? Here. Allison? Here. Fahey? Here. Mullen? Here. Newmaster? Here. Wilson? Here. All right, our first operational item is B1 certification of the 2019 pay. <laughs> 2020 proposed property tax levy. Mr. Wald, say you. Yes, good evening, Chair Mullen, members of the board. Each year the board is required to certify uh, to the auditors of Anoka, Ramsey, and Washington County the uh, district's preliminary levy for the upcoming calendar year. This is, this is the case for taxes payable in 2020 and for the school year 2021. Uh, the preliminary, uh, preliminary certification is what will be mailed to residents in mid-November uh, mid as their preliminary tax notice. Uh, the board typically certifies the maximum amount, allowing for adjustments between now and the public hearing uh, and the final levy certification at the December board meeting. The certification at the December meeting will reflect the actual taxes paid in 2020. So today we're asking the board to approve the maximum levy certification the preliminary numbers reflect an increase of 6.79% in the levy and has a net tax impact on the $275,000 home of $5 a year or about 42 cents a month. So we've taken into account the finance and debt schedules as calculated in our upcoming bond referendum, um, in the revenue plan for our upcoming bond referendum. So the project uh, projected tax impact of the um, uh, the levy or the referendum will not change based on tonight's certification. If you look in your packet at the first document, we'll walk through an explanation. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, so looking at line one tax levy information, um, you can see line one shows a change of $783,866. This includes uh, increasing enrollment and a cost of living adjustment. The um, CPI factored for 2020 is 1.85%. So line one is really, that that's the total certified tax levy spread on residential market value. That's our operating levy. Uh, line two shows a $2.5 million increase that the majority of this is LTFM and capital project levy, as well as a variety of other general fund components, including operating capital, achievement and integration, and lease levy. Um, and so that number includes the CPI adjustment on it. Line three is the community service fund. Uh, that's essentially flat at $658. Line four is the general debt service levy, an increase of $471,457. That's required debt service payment for our general debt. So it doesn't include OPEB bonds that we also make uh, debt payments on, but all other debt. And then line five is uh, reduction, uh, reduction of $785,297, and that's a reduction in our OPEB payments. Uh, this is the final year of our OPEB payments. That's $9.6 .9 million. So the total levy increase, just under $3 million, an increase of 6.79%. If you move down to lines 15 and 16, um, compelling numbers of the property value information looking at the, the three different counties that we serve and the county assessments. So that shows a res, uh, residential market value of increase of 6.9%, um, and the next tax capacity of 7%. So if we look at the second page, um, you can see in the $275,000 um, home value, the increase is 0.4% or $5, uh, $5 a month. So once you apply 
the, the increase in residential market value, then the, everyone's value goes up at that rate of 6.9%. And so people whose value goes up slightly below 6.9% would see a slight reduction or lower tax impact than those whose uh, market value of their homes goes up more than 6.9% would see a corresponding increase. Um, but if, if your market value of your home went up 6.9%, 6, 6 uh, you should see a flat, no impact at all. Okay, so tonight we're recommending that the board certify the maximum levy increase of 6.79%, and we'll be returning to you in December uh, for a public hearing on this and, and bring the, the actual certification at that time for a final certification. Okay, uh, you've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. And Tom, you want to come on? A motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Newmaster. Uh, is there any discussion on on the motion? Ms. I just have a clarifying question. Why is this something that the school board needs to approve? Just because I'm curious. Um, it's, uh, it, it's a lot when you're a... a elected body levying taxes on the community, then you have to approve the amount that you're gonna put on. Okay. Every September we do this, um, and then every December you approve the final. So the, this is the preliminary levy. School boards are required by statute to approve the preliminary levy by the end of September, and they're re required to approve the um, final certification. They're, they're um, I don't know, the date, December 20th or something like that. So. It's an in. It happens every year. So I probably Required asked the same statute. question last year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but we do this. I don't remember it. But. <laughs> we did this at the December board meeting last year. We'll, we'll do it December yeah. board meeting again okay. this year. Yeah. Okay. Every September, every December, this is one of those things we're required to do by statute. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, we will take a, this will require a roll call vote. Beloit? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Okay. Uh, the motion passes. Thank you very much. We will now move to our next operational item, uh, B2, which is action on the resolution to not use eminent domain. Is that you, Ms. Dr. Kazmierczak? It is. And uh, I just want to point out that Mr. Walls is excusing himself shortly because because of a presentation tonight on the bond referendum at Sunrise. So that's why he'll be leaving. Thank you for your right, work. Thank, yep, thank you, Tim. And thank, okay, thank you, Chairman, all the members of the board. I wanted to start out by um, providing a little bit of information in part because these are newer slides and from, a, from previous uh, presentations you you perhaps haven't seen the new information, so I wanted to I wanted to start there. Um, just a uh, um, this list provides a comprehensive list of the major uh, pieces of the puzzle at each of our sites, and when we talk about this bond referendum covering all facilities, all of our buildings, all of our students, um, this provides a, a great visual um, to that to that statement. And again, it's probably not. Uh, well, you can read it pretty well, but uh, but this is available. Um, we can make this available to you. This is one of the document or one of the slides we're showing as we as we present to again give the to give the comprehensive or to to, to talk about the comprehensive nature of the plan and to give the to give that uh, that visual. And we think it's helpful to do that. Also, <clears throat> we've talked about North Campus and um, the the new, a new high school. We've been talking about this being a new high school on North Campus and. Um, this is just a graphical representation. This is not. Um, this has not been designed yet. But this is the graphic that we've been using to show what it might look like, or, and especially in terms of the addition to the to the site. Um, and this is helpful and this is informative as we talk about the. What we're going to ask you to act upon earlier. So this uh, this expansion of North Campus um, can occur on a, on the land we currently own, and that's been the intent all along. Um, this um, <clears throat> this plan uh, uses the existing North Campus building, which was built very well. It, it needs some updating, but the bones of the structure are very, very sound. And so um, expanding on that site and utilizing the existing building in addition to the new square footage makes a lot of sense. 
also um, wanted to share with you a little bit more about tax impact. <clears throat> You've seen this graphic many times over, I'm sure, and this is available on the district's website along with a tax calculator. But we wanted to provide a little bit more context because the question has come up, how do we compare to our neighbors? How do we compare to other school districts in terms of tax impact? And so we did compile this um, this graphic, and I believe you've perhaps all seen this before, but maybe not part of a presentation. So way over on the left <coughs> is White Bear Lake, and this is our voter approved school debt tax levy. This is an annual amount. So and, and this is an example on a $250,000 home. Uh, our current um, voter approved school debt tax levy is $24 a year. And if the bond is approved, it would move to $275 a year which is still below the average of $317 a year for our neighboring school districts. And you can see those districts listed, um, North St. Paul, Maple Wood, Oakdale, Stillwater, Mounds View, Forest Lake, Roseville, Matamide, Centennial, and South Wash. So, um, so in terms of the, the $326 million bond referendum, it, it is a large number, but when we talk about the tax impact, um, we are not an outlier in terms of what we're uh, asking our residents compared to what other school districts have asked. This is an important uh, graphic. Pardon? We're still even less than Yeah, like. right. Okay, and then one other thing that we've added to our presentation, and uh, this was prompted when we met with a group of, um, a couple of groups of senior citizens, and then, so we put this together and we decided this was important not only for senior citizens, but for all of our residents to know that there are, uh, there are um, there's a possibility of a, a Minnesota Homestead Credit Refund uh, working in their favor. So if we focus on the bottom chart, I'll just, I'll just choose one. The, the bottom one is a $275,000 home, and the household income, if we just focus on the $100,000 household income, because that's about, just slightly under that is, a, is about um, the average household income in our school district. And so uh, an, a, a family with an average household income and a, living in an average priced home in uh, our school district could see a, a, um, a refund of $168 a year. So then the net uh, tax impact would be $9.33 a month. And this is available every year. So, um, so we've gotten word out about this too and I, I wanted to make sure you understood it because as you have conversations, with folks that you might want to refer to this. So. Okay, so with that, we want to um, perhaps put to rest this um, question of will the, will the district use eminent domain or not, and we have stated all along that we would not. Um, <clears throat> but given that we, we continue to be asked that question, we thought it was important for you to, to take a formal position on this. We've stated it many times publicly, um, both the school board and ad administrators, as we present, um, we state publicly that we will not um, use eminent domain. But we felt like putting this in front of you and to have a um, you know, brief conversation again if you wish, but then to actually uh, read this into the record and take action on it might be helpful to communicate to our public that we do not intend to use eminent domain. So, so what we'll do is uh, let's read the resolution in for the record. Um, then we'll ask for a motion on it and we can start to move through any discussion from there. How's that? So I'd ask the clerk to please read the resolution. Whereas the White Bear Lake Area Schools building bond referendum question includes a comprehensive facilities plan that increases opportunities for students by creating a new single unified grade 912 high school on the current White Bear Lake Area High School North Campus site. Whereas the proposed single unified grade 912 high school could be built on the existing property already owned by the district. Whereas the White Bear Lake Area Schools Administration and individual school board members have publicly stated that the district will not use eminent domain to acquire any homes near the proposed site of the single unified high school facility. Therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 624, State of Minnesota, as follows. If the district's November 5th, 2019 building bond referendum is approved, the White Bear Lake Area School Board will not use eminent domain to acquire neighboring homes to expand White Bear Lake Area High School North Campus to become the district's single unified 912 
High School. You've heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. A motion by Mr. Chapman, a second by Mr. Wilson. Any discussion regarding the resolution? Ms. Fahey. I just, to make it clear and publicly state again, which we've said since the beginning, this is not we're changing our minds in the middle of this, but it's a rumor that started. This board has always stated from the very beginning that we will not use eminent domain. But unfortunately, that rumor persists. So we are hoping by passing this resolution that it will be officially in the record that this is something that we have said since the beginning. Any other discussion regarding the resolution? Seeing none, let's have a roll call vote with this. Beloy, aye. Chapman, aye. Ellison, aye. Fahey, aye. Mullen, aye. Newmaster, aye. Wilson, aye. The resolution is adopted. All right, thank you. All right, I will, at this time, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, I move to adjourn. I will second that. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And we are adjourned.